Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I've got a couple of very interesting subjects I want to talk to you guys about and give you some updates for. I want to begin with Intel's Arrow Lake because there are some confirmations now regarding the specifications that have leaked online. I want to give you guys some additional kind of tidbits to give you a better insight into exactly what's going on with those processes in terms of their sampling at the moment. And then we're going to finish the video off with some updates to Bartlett Lake, which of course I leaked about a week ago. If you missed that video, basically speaking, they are um, new CPUs that Intel are kind of working on at the moment, which are going to be for budget focused to gamers along with you know oems that type of thing and they are will be yet another refresh essentially of raptor lake but with some very interesting differences and i've managed to find out a couple of very uh well you'll find out more in a second but let's start things out with arrow lake so instalat x64 said that i spotted a new arrow lake s uh, cpu id c0 660 24 threads 3 gigahertz without avx 512 amongst the Intel test machines. Um, I would actually recommend you guys give this account a follow if you are on Twitter because it's a pretty interesting account, at least in my opinion. And this basically confirms a couple of things. So first of all, um, hyper-threading is gone. Now, a lot of folks do know that already, that Intel's Arrow Lake processors, the performance cores will no longer support um, hyper-threading, which of course has been a mainstay now for Intel processors for quite some time, that is hyper-threading whether we're talking the older architectures, for example, Sandy Bridge, whatever, which of course also had hyper-threading across all of their cores, or the more, you know, older lake or whatever, where of course only the performance cores had hyper-threading. This has just been something that Intel have been pushing for quite some time. So in this case, now the number of processor cores directly is proportional to the number of threads. So of course here we have eight performance cores and we have 16 energy efficient cores. I am hearing that next year there will be a refresh of Arrow Lake, which is going to basically be pretty much the same thing. The difference is it will double the number of E cores, and I've spoken about this a couple of times before. However, it's possible that this will get canned or changed last minute. Who the hell knows because it is Intel. And as I've mentioned like a trillion times at this point, there are no rentable units. Also, for the desktop anyway, AVX512 has not ever been considered with support. Now, I also want to give you guys a couple of little bits of context to this. So, first of all, I believe that these tests, speaking to a source, is being done on ES0. So, obviously, 3 GHz is not the final clock frequency target. I've heard for the P cores, although certainly do take this with a bit of a a little bit of salt because at the end of the day clock frequencies can either be surpassed or not quite met but i've heard you know mid four gigahertz is probably predicted for the p cores i've had some folks tell me it's going to be a little faster than that but ultimately this is not going to be like you know seven gigahertz or something like that but either way the current uh, results are probably being achieved with ES0. Meteor Lake, on the other hand, is ES1, but there will be new Arrow Lake um, chips for testing, which are coming out in the next couple of months, and I hear that these are going to be ES2. So it's going to be very interesting, honestly, to see how Arrow Lake is met in the market. Obviously, I did leak some stuff regarding Zen 5, and frankly, I'm getting more confident that the Zen 5 stuff I leaked in terms of the absolutely crazy IPC gains, like 30%. Um, I think that was in the previous video of Memory Serves, but I'm getting more confident that that is true. So honestly, if that is accurate, it's just going to be absolutely nuts how performant those processors are. I think it's going to be absolutely crazy. Um, I think there are probably going to be some very solid leaks in the next month or two for the um, for the AM5 platform, uh, just based upon what I'm hearing. So um, I think it's going to be very interesting to see actually how Zen 5 ends up. Um, obviously, at the end of the day, I still have some level of skepticism because those IPC numbers are just so just just crazy high. But um, if they are true, it is absolutely going to be nuts for AMD. And God knows what we're going to be expecting with the X3D variants. But now I want to talk to you guys more about Bartlett. So if you missed my previous video, I'll give a very quick TLDR. But this is going to be a new set of processors. Well, new in, let's say, speech, <laughs> speech marks. Um, basically, they are LGA1700 uh, socket. 
and they obviously essentially will act as a drop-in replacement so if you already have a board whatever that board is as long as it's LGA 1700 in theory you will be able to do a BIOS update and plonk in goes these new processors now initially my report was that I had no information concerning the SKUs, so I didn't know, for example, what the core counts were or anything like that, but basically I heard that Intel were going to reduce the cost as much as possible. They would be very much targeted towards OEMs as well, so that would also mean that some boards would be released, which would obviously you know, cut the cost as absolutely much as possible. And there would be a variant of these which would potentially release in mobile as well. So now that you're all caught up, well, at least relatively so, I want to talk to you guys a little bit more about the new information I've managed to dig out. Uh, dig up, excuse me. So Bartlett was originally intended for NEX customers, but now it's being considered to be ported. Now, previously I'd said that I was very positive that it was going to happen. At the moment, it's looking like it's probable that it's going to happen, but Intel still haven't 100% decided. So if this is something you guys want, you know what to do, nudge Intel. But on a serious note, yeah, um, it, there's going to be a lot of stuff that Intel still are trying to evaluate in terms of the market. One of the really interesting things is that I can't 100% decide or so I find out what the differences are. Because when I've asked several sources at this point, it seems that many of the SKUs are very similar in specifications. For example, I was told that there's an 8 plus 16. I asked about the L3 cache because in my previous video, one source had told me that they heard that the L3 cache was larger, but this does not seem to be the case. Furthermore, it's basically the exact same ring bus, the same process node. So if, for example, you were thinking, well, there's going to be some architectural improvements, blah, 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 blah. No, that's not going to happen. It does not look like that is the case. It looks essentially like, well, the same thing over again. Now, again, there could be some subtle differences. Maybe they'll manage to squeeze a little bit of extra performance out of the chips in terms of clock frequency. Maybe the IMC will be a little better, whatever. But architecturally essentially if you look at the current generation of intel processors you will know what you are looking at um so it's not going to have i mean obviously this is a, you know it's completely ridiculous but it's basically it's not going to have you know intel um super glue some hbm memory onto it is essentially what i'm saying it's going to basically be the same thing although that would be bloody cool but yeah absolutely ridiculous um again it is for lga 1700 however this is where things get quite interesting because this was a product that was being considered for any x there is actually the potential that there will be a 12 performance core variant now if you're unfamiliar with what that means um, and I don't blame you because some people just are not giving a crap about NEX products, which is fine. Um, and to be honest, I'm probably one of them. Uh, um, basically, you just take the E cores, right? So what you, I want you to do is just look at, you know, the processor. And I want you to take the E cores and you just put them in the trash. And then instead you just replace them with the P cores. That's essentially what's going on here. Um, now, obviously, those P cores would have, you know changes architecturally to work so uh, they would also work exactly identical to the current p cores so for example they would have hyper threading so it would be like 12 cores 24 threads but that's apparently what intel are considering right now now i don't need to tell you guys that that would be a very interesting product for a lot of different reasons i i, I have to say i think it would be bloody interesting to see what would that would be like in benchmarks for games um, obviously, it would still get spanked in some applications against, let's say, a Zen 4X3D or whatever. But as always, with any product, as you always know, it's not necessarily, um, you know, just performance, whether it's good or bad. For example, if you were to go back and look at, I don't know, like the... the Let's, let's, let's think of a really good example, like the GTX 1060... And then you could compare that to like the 1080 Ti. Obviously, it's a very ridiculous comparison. And, you know, you didn't take into consideration price. It would look a very shitty product, let's just be honest. But obviously, when you look at the price difference between a GTX 1060 and a 1080 Ti, they're very different. So obviously, in this case, it's going to depend very much what the platform cost is, what the cost of the processors are, etc., etc. With that said, guys, I think that's just about it for this particular video. I have been very much working on, let's say, some other rumors at the moment, but there's just 
Uh, I'm trying to clarify a couple of points on some stuff regarding consoles, as well as some stuff, for, uh, well, actually AMD and NVIDIA. But uh, yeah, it's probably going to be over the next couple of days that those videos come out. I apologize, they were originally supposed to come out actually today, but then I had to rewrite some of the script and I got some additional information with some other products. So yeah, I would prefer to be, well, as accurate as I can, obviously. But that said, I wish you all an amazing day. Stay safe. Bye for now.